What is going on guys and welcome to the video. This is 10 mistakes that you should avoid for your next ultra marathon. After I ran my first ultra marathon about six weeks ago at the Bighorn 52 mile race up in Wyoming in the Bighorn Mountains, I've gotten a ton of questions from people asking about everything involved with running and ultra running. So I thought I would take the chance to share my thoughts, my experiences, and most importantly, avoiding the same mistakes that I made. So with that being said, let's get into it. So the first mistake to avoid is not knowing the course. I would say one of the most important things going into your next ultra marathon is to study the course that you're going to be running. Look up YouTube videos, check out the race website, talk to other people you know that have ran the course because the last thing you want is to show up race day and have surprises. You don't want to be surprised in ultra marathons. And so doing your due diligence and planning and researching as much as you can before race day is going to be huge. And that leads me into my second mistake to avoid, not changing your socks or shoes enough. So during my race, there were roughly 50 creek crossings, about one every mile or so. And because of that, my feet were just constantly soaked. And me, the rookie ultra marathon runner, I didn't change my socks until mile 35. So the first eight hours of the race, I just had soaking wet feet. My feet were pruny, my skin was peeling off, I had blisters, it was disgusting. So if your course has water or mud or snow or anything wet, make sure to change out your socks and shoes as often as possible. The third mistake to avoid is not training properly. And this kind of goes off of knowing what the course is gonna be like, because then you can implement that type of terrain or weather or elevation change into your training. And if you had a situation like mine where you are running a mountainous race, but you don't live near the mountains, like here in Texas, there's other things you can do like the Stairmaster or an incline treadmill or finding literally just a quarter mile hill like I did and running up and down it all day. As boring as that sounds, it helped me a lot when it came to race day. You need to simulate race day, simulate the terrains and the weather and everything else as much as you can in training. The fourth mistake to avoid is not having a nutrition plan. It gets talked about all the time, but I wanna reiterate it, that nutrition is one of the most important things when it comes to ultra marathons. And more specifically, dialing in your nutrition pre-race day during your training. The last thing you wanna do is show up race day, you see all these aid stations with all these gummy bears and cookies and brownies and quesadillas and all this stuff you normally wouldn't eat and just start eating it. Like that's the last thing you wanna do because your stomach cannot handle it because it hasn't been used to it. And you really just need to plan ahead, not only what you're gonna be eating, but when you're gonna be eating it. It's gonna be important to know, okay, every 40 minutes, I'm gonna be having a gel and a scoop of Tailwind or G1M Sport, or every four miles, I'm gonna have a scoop of electrolytes or a salt pill. It doesn't matter what it is, just dial it in, figure out what works for you and do it during training. This leads me into the fifth mistake to avoid for your next ultra marathon, and that is not having enough salt or electrolytes. So during my 50 mile race, I cramped up for the first time ever during a run. I'd never experienced what that was like. And let me tell you, it was terrible. If you've never cramped up in the middle of a run, I don't wish that upon anybody. It is not fun. It hurts. It's uncomfortable. You can't really run. I thought I was taking in enough salt. Um, but you know, six, seven, eight hours into a race, you just have to stay on top of it. And I could just slowly feel it creeping up, creeping up, creeping up. And by that time it was too late. So basically every muscle in my lower body cramped up and that was not a good time. So stay on top of electrolytes. Going off of that is the sixth mistake to avoid. And that is not taking in enough calories. Again, nutrition, important part of ultra marathons. And you need to make sure you're getting in minimum 150 to 300 calories per hour and it doesn't matter if it's solid food or liquid food or gels, you just need to make sure that you're getting in enough calories because to keep moving forward, our bodies need that fuel. And the last thing you wanna do is not give it enough fuel and then you end up bonking. The seventh mistake to avoid for your next ultra marathon arguably might be the most important, going out too hard. These races are long. It doesn't matter if it's a 50K, 100K, 100 miler, you're gonna be out there for a while. And the last thing you wanna do is go out and try and bank some time or bank some miles 
And then you just end up having to walk it in or DNF later on in the race because you just went out too hard and hurt yourself. So the way I like to look at it is rather than banking miles or time, it's better to bank energy. So if you go out at a nice conservative effort, nice and easy, you feel good, you're conserving energy so that later on in the race, you still have that bank of energy left and you can push hard if you want to. Because trust me, I've gone out on runs where I go out way too hard and then halfway through, I'm just depleted. So don't go out too hard, be conservative. All right, the eighth mistake to avoid is not having the right gear. And again, this goes back to knowing what the course is gonna look like and the terrain. Are you gonna need warm weather gear? Are you gonna need cold weather gear? Is it gonna be snowy or icy? Do you need cleats for your shoes? Do you need multiple pairs of shoes? Do you need multiple pairs of socks? Do you need a raincoat? Do you need gloves? Do you need trekking poles? How many water flasks do you need? All these different things are very important. And another piece of advice is whatever gear you do plan on using on race day, make sure that you use it during training as well. You wanna go out and test it, see what works. You don't wanna show up race day with brand new trekking poles that still have the price tag on them. No, you wanna have miles on all of your gear and you wanna show up race day and not even have to think about what gear you're using. The next mistake to avoid is not socializing during your race. The ultra running community is one of the most welcoming, inviting, encouraging communities I've ever come in contact with. Everybody is so friendly and nice and they just want everybody to have a good time and everybody to get to the finish line. It doesn't matter if it's participants or volunteers or people that are supporting other people. Everybody's just so friendly and you should take advantage of that and talk to people, socialize with people. If you're out on the course and you're passing by somebody, say what's up, ask them how they're doing, where they're from. Um, maybe don't ask them how they're doing because likely they're suffering a little bit, but still socialize a little bit. I think that the community aspect of ultra running is one of the best parts about it. So make sure to get out there and socialize. All right, last but certainly not least, the 10th mistake to avoid is not having fun. When it comes to ultra marathons, the race is just the cherry on top of this whole experience. The training, the prep, the travel, all this stuff it goes into this whole experience of an ultra marathon and you really should embrace the whole experience. Have fun with it. Don't go out there and try and beat everybody and be competitive and just put your head down and run. No, go out there, have fun, enjoy the surroundings. Most of the time these ultra marathons are in a beautiful location. Like the one I did was in Wyoming in the mountains and it's just massive walls and waterfalls and wildlife and sunrises. It's just beautiful. You're out in nature, just go out there, enjoy the day, enjoy your training, enjoy the experience as a whole, and I promise you, you're gonna do great. All right, guys, that is 10 mistakes to avoid for your next ultra marathon. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you got something out of this. If you guys wanna check it out or you haven't seen it already, I'm gonna put my Bighorn 52 mile video right here. You can click right there, check it out, watch me suffer for 13 hours. Thank you guys for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.